The continued fallout from the sex trafficking probe against Sean Diddy Combs has his rivals seemingly rejoicing. From 50 Cent to Suge Knight to Danity Kane member Aubrey O'Day and former Diddy music collaborator Mace, all are reacting to the federal government's reported sex trafficking probe against the hip hop mogul. Their feuds against Diddy have ranged from business disputes to personal disputes, some even turning violent. One of the longest standing beefs is probably with Death Row founder Marion Knight, better known as Suge Knight. The feud could be traced back to the early 90s, seemingly advancing the beef between East Coast rappers and West Coast rappers. The two reportedly used to be friends, but that relationship was never the same after Shook's friend and security guard Jake Robles was shot and killed outside an Atlanta nightclub in 95, after reportedly getting into an argument with someone from Diddy's bad boy entourage. Diddy, who was reportedly going by Puffy during that time, was celebrating Jermaine Dupri's birthday with members of his entourage at an after party. Suge Knight was also in attendance and partying with his entourage when an argument broke out between both sides. An Atlanta PD officer who was working off-duty security for the party told the LA Times police escorted Puffy and his guests outside the club and thought the coast was clear allowing Knight and his entourage to leave. He told the Times all of a sudden one of Puffy's men came around the corner with a gun. And by the time the officer slash security guard got back to the front of the club, Shook's friend Jake Robles was shot multiple times. Robles died weeks later. Diddy denied his involvement in the shooting, but Shook reportedly held him responsible for it. Just a month prior to the shooting, Shook Knight had insulted the bad boy founder at the 1995 Source Awards, when Knight openly criticized Diddy's ad libs on his artist's songs and dancing in their videos. Knight went on stage saying, quote, Anyone out there who want to be a recording artist and want to stay a star and don't have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the records, dancing, come to death row. That same year, Knight offered to post bail for rapper Tupac Shakur if the rapper agreed to sign with death row. Tupac agreed, which would later set the stage for the release of All Eyes on Me and the Don Caluminati. Tupac and Puffy's best friend, Notorious B.I.G., were once friends, but their relationship also soured as the two became rivals, amplifying the East Coast and West Coast beef. Both would take shots at one another through songs, and the feud would turn violent, even deadly. Tupac was shot and killed after leaving a Mike Tyson fight in Las Vegas in September of 96. Biggie was shot and killed in Los Angeles just months later in March of 97. No one was ever charged for the 97 death of Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Notorious B.I.G. However, in September of last year, Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, who was allegedly one of the last living witnesses to the fatal shooting of Tupac, was arrested and charged with the rapper's murder more than two decades after the All Eyes on Me rapper was gunned down in Vegas. Davis reportedly told LAPD investigators in 2008 Diddy offered him $1 million for Tupac's assassination. And while that claim has been unsubstantiated and Diddy has denied all involvement in Tupac's murder, is it possible the recent sex trafficking probe has anything to do with Keefe D's September arrest? Former federal prosecutor Nima Romani says not likely. I think the Diddy investigation likely started when ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura filed that bombshell lawsuit in November. Of course, Diddy settled it the following day, but it was too late. Once that civil complaint was filed, the allegations were public and other people started to come forward. We saw three or four additional lawsuits. I think the biggest one after Cassie was when Little Rod filed. And I mean, the allegations were salacious. And this was someone, Cassie, who had an 11 year relationship with Diddy. I mean, she knows where the bodies are buried. And she's talking about these terrible sex acts. She herself was drugged and raped. She was forced to have sex with male prostitutes. And of course, it was the allegations of sex with minor victims. I think that's what likely got the feds interested in the case. Now, if you're a prosecutor or you're Diddy's defense attorney, you have to anticipate the defense that this is just a disgruntled ex. This is someone that, you know, fabricated allegations because of money. But when victim after victim comes forward and they corroborate the story, I think you have enough probable cause to open an investigation and get that search warrant. Now, when agents raided the home, I think they were looking for those videos. So two categories of videos. There were allegations that Diddy himself would videotape these sex acts, but also that he had hidden cameras all throughout his home and that they captured some of this unlawful conduct. So I think that's what law enforcement agents were looking for. 
In light of last week's federal raids on Diddy's home, Suge Knight, who is serving a more than 20-year sentence for manslaughter, commented on his longtime rival seemingly pointing to Diddy spending time behind bars. In an outtake from his Collect Call podcast with Dave Mays, the Death Row founder gave his thoughts and prayers to Diddy's children. But Shook seemingly referred to the raids as a bad day for hip-hop, blasting the bad boy founder for giving hip-hop a bad image. In the clip, Shook said, Diddy, your life is in danger because you know the secrets who's involved in that little secret room you guys are participating in. Shook then warned his rival, they're going to get you if they can. He said, I turned myself in. Sometimes you got to face the music. Shook isn't the only rival of Diddy's commenting on the sex trafficking probe. Curtis Jackson, better known as 50 Cent, has also been feuding with the bad boy founder for nearly 20 years. When Diddy's homes were raided, 50 Cent posted this message to Instagram, seemingly taunting his rival, writing, now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. The feud between the two seemingly goes back to 2006, when 50 Cent released a diss track called The Bomb, where he claimed Diddy knew who shot and killed rapper Notorious B.I.G. in 97. Diddy has frequently denied he had any information about his best friend's killer. Then in 2014, the feud between Diddy and 50 continued into their business ventures when both represented competing vodka brands. Over the years, 50 Cent has also made jabs about Diddy's sexuality, often referring to the mega producer as fruity. During a 2018 episode of Drink Champs, 50 Cent said when he says things, he doesn't know what he'd be saying is like fruity. He says to Fabulous, me and you, we need a party. When people say that to me, I get a little uncomfortable. That thought was echoed last year when 50 Cent spoke about Diddy's infamous parties. That's why I don't be going to them puffy parties. Uh uh. The hug you from the front and the back at the same time. What are you talking about? Uh, I mean, look, if you're into that, you're into that, I'm fine with it. To get you some. I'm just saying this ain't my mother down the pot. I like it. It's uncomfortable. So could those in attendance of the infamous parties be called to speak with federal investigators as potential witnesses? Romani says some famous names should be concerned. You know, when there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not saying that um, these allegations are necessarily true. Obviously, they have to be proven. But there are a lot of people that are perpetuating these rumors. And whether it's Cat Williams, whether it's 50 Cent, whether it's someone else, there seems to be a lot of legs to these rumors. And, you know, I'm someone that's a former federal prosecutor. I represent victims now. I tend to believe victims, especially when multiple victims are coming forward and they're telling the same story. So, you know, if you're uh, involved in Bad Boy or Diddy's Inner Circle or you've been present at these parties, I don't care if you're Justin Bieber, I don't care if you're Usher, Cuba Gooding Jr., uh, Prince Harry. I mean, these are a lot of names that have been thrown about. I would be very concerned because you may be wrapped up in a big investigation and you know as we know with the r kelly case the jeff epstein case usually when these rich and famous and powerful people are engaged in this type of sexual activity they're not doing it alone right obviously uh, epstein and Ghislaine maxwell she was convicted and sent to federal prison and uh, we know there's a lot of allegations right now against uh, diddy's chief of staff Christina Horam, that she was involved in uh, procuring some of these victims. Uh, there's allegations that Diddy's own sons, Justin and others, were uh, involved in some of this. So I'm not saying that's necessarily true, but usually in these types of cases, uh, people that have money, they're using others to groom and entice and solicit these victims and to get them. And if you're talking about these massive parties, and we've all seen the pictures, there's dozens of people at these parties. You know, what did they know? When did they know it? And what did they see? And if they saw these sex acts and worse participated in, they're either witnesses or even worse, you know, they're criminals and co-defendants. When Diddy's ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura sued Diddy in November, 50 Cent said his production company was working on a documentary about the sexual assault allegations against Combs. When Diddy stepped down as chairman of his revolt company, 50 Cent tweeted he had interest in taking over the media organization, writing, quote, I'll buy that from you, Playboy, for the low, because you know Cadillac and AT&T going to pull out. I'll give you a few dollars for it now. Sell it to me. Then we can be friends. I'm serious. Call my phone. The trolling from 50 Cent continued when the mother of his child, Daphne Joy was named in the Rodney Jones $30 million civil lawsuit against Diddy. In the documents, Joy was referred to as one of the alleged sex workers Diddy had on a monthly stipend. So sexual activity between consenting adults is not illegal. Um, paying your sex partner 
can be illegal, but we're talking about prostitution. It's not a very serious offense. Trafficking involves really one of two things, force or the threat of force, right? Or kidnapping someone lacking free will or minors. And minors cannot consent to sexual activity under any circumstances. So if you have that force or something akin to force or minors, that's when it becomes trafficking. That's when it becomes a federal crime. Previously in September of 2022, 50 Cent accused Daphne Joy of gallivanting with Diddy at the iHeartRadio Music Festival. And when she was named in Jones's suit as an alleged sex worker, 50 Cent posted this to Instagram with the caption saying in part, I didn't know you was a sex worker, you little sex worker, LOL. Daphne Joy has since denied the sex worker claims posting this statement to her social media. She says, I'm deeply hurt by the lies in the Rodney Jones lawsuit. The claim that I'm a sex worker is 100 percent false and character assassination. I'm retaining an attorney to explore all legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. In light of the allegations, 50 Cent is reportedly seeking sole custody of his son that he shares with Daphne Joy. Joy slammed her ex, 50 Cent, on social media, writing in part, Everything is a joke to you until our safety is compromised, which is happening now. How would you feel if Sire was the one in handcuffs for nothing? Diddy's former mentee and former bad boy rapper Mace also seemingly weighed in on the feds raiding Diddy's homes. A day after the raids, Mace told his co-host Cameron during an episode of their podcast, Come and Talk to Me, it's amazing that all of this would transpire on that day. That's eerie, man. The day he's referring to is the anniversary of Life After Death, the last album posthumously released by Diddy's best friend, Notorious B.I.G. Mace and Diddy have what some would call an embattled history. Mace previously was signed to Bad Boy Records in the 90s and early 2000s. Thousands. That relationship would forever change after various business disputes. When signed to Bad Boy, the multi-platinum rapper gave his publishing rights to Diddy for a reported $20,000. But when he attempted to get his catalog back years later, he publicly slammed Diddy when the mogul turned down Mace's $2 million offer to buy back his publishing. Diddy ultimately gave the publishing rights back to Mace. And Mace isn't the only former artist under Diddy's Bad Boy records that has spoken out since the federal raids on Diddy's homes. Danity Kane member Aubrey O'Day released a statement saying, quote, what you sow, you shall reap. O'Day has been vocal about the bad boy founder even prior to the raids. In December of 2022, O'Day said she was fired from Danity Kane in 2008 because she wasn't willing to do what was expected of her, not talent wise, but in other areas. She added that she wasn't the only girl that was put in those types of positions. When Diddy announced his plans to reassign publishing rights to select bad boy artists, including Mace, Danity Kane, Faith Evans, and Notorious B.I.G., O'Day claimed that deal came with strings attached. The strings being non-disclosure agreements the artists had to sign. O'Day said the NDA agreement included the artists would not disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, Diddy's mother, Justin Combs' music, EMI Publishing, or Sony ever in public. And despite Diddy offering the publishing rights back to groups like Danity Kane, O'Day said that doesn't equal more money for the group, adding at the time the deal would have only brought her less than $1,000 in royalties. So in light of last week's raids and the alleged sex trafficking probe, is an arrest looming for the bad boy founder? Romani says absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an arrest and an indictment being unsealed in a matter of days or weeks. Usually when law enforcement executes a search warrant like this at the federal level, they're working hand in hand with prosecutors. So they've drafted an indictment based on the cooperator testimony, that witness testimony that they already have, whether it's informal meetings of the U.S. Attorney's Office or formal testimony before the grand jury. I think what they're looking for is that video evidence. If it corroborates what the victims have said, then we're going to look at potential sex trafficking charges, production of child pornography, drug trafficking, weapons. It's going to be a sprawling indictment, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a RICO-type conspiracy because that's what the federal prosecutors used in the R. Kelly case. He says if the case develops into serious charges and a conviction for the hip-hop mogul, Diddy could face hefty sentences, putting him away for decades. You know, uh, I do see Diddy going on the offense. Um, sometimes the best defense is a good offense. And Look, let's not forget, he's been charged before, obviously much less serious crimes, but the New York nightclub shooting with J-Lo, right? He beat that case. Those were weapons charges, there were bribery charges. Um, the allegations were that um, Diddy actually shot the victim and that he bribed uh, his security guard to take the fall for it. But um, 
he won that case. And I think in this case as well, I'm not saying he's going to win necessarily, but he's going to fight. And the reason he's going to fight is when he cares about his reputation, he cares about his empire. And I can't see a situation where there's any type of possible deal because when you're talking about sex crimes under federal law, depending on the age of the victim, it's 10 or 15 years for each count. Production of child pornography. And these are mandatory minimums. That means the judge can't go lower than these numbers. You know, the max obviously is life. And same thing with the production of child pornography. You're talking about mandatory minimums of 15 years. So Diddy can't take a deal. He won't really be offered a deal. So he's going to come out swinging and very few cases go to trial. But I fully expect this to be one of them. And with the once seemingly untouchable figure now under a mountain of legal battles, Romani credits survivors for speaking out to hold alleged perpetrators accountable. I think the tide has turned and now victims um, are coming forward. Uh, they're empowered. Prosecutors are taking these cases a lot more seriously. Maybe they were risk averse, so they didn't necessarily want to bring a case based on the testimony of one victim. But as victim after victim comes forward and alleges the same conduct, you're seeing prosecutors be more aggressive. So, you know, maybe this was one of the worst kept secrets uh, here in Hollywood, in Miami, in New York, and elsewhere. But I think uh, those secrets are going to see the light of day um, and see that light of day very soon. Through his lawyer, Diddy has denied any wrongdoing. His lawyer called the raid a gross overuse of military level force, adding there was no excuse for the excessive show of force exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.